I've got my solarium set up, the special DDO panorama, which is really, really cool. We use this when we do public events here. We have a room in the other admin building where we have the whole wall filled with stellarium and we have an immersive space <clears throat> that we can show people the sky with. Right now, what I'm gonna do is bring up tonight's sky once it's dark around nine o'clock, now that we're on um, daylight savings time and bring up the Messier target. So I'm going to stellarium here and I'm gonna bring up just the Messier targets, but then I'm gonna do a neat little trick for everybody. So, whoops. So here's the Messier targets. The way. So those are the colored symbols that you can see. But I've also got a set of bookmarks. So this actually covers all four seasons of the year's worth. And we're just going to focus on the winter targets since we finished spring. And so I'm going to bring up my bookmarks here, my Stellarium bookmarks, and highlight the winter bookmarks, the winter or sorry, the, the spring Messier objects. So you can see at this time of the year, <clears throat> most of them are still rising in the eastern sky in early evening. And we've got, this week we've got a pretty full moon in the sky. So what I thought I'd do is have everybody tackle <clears throat> some of the brighter objects. And those would be the ones, the open clusters in Cancer, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and a double star up in Ursa Major. So to start off, we're going to go with, just get my little human zoom people out of my face, out of my way here. So Messier 44 is here in Cancer. So this is an easy target. It's a bright open cluster. It's naked eye if you have a dark sky, binoculars, any size of a telescope. It's twice the size of the full moon. And it's easy to locate it if you use not the stars of Cancer, which are rather dim, but if you use the star Procyon. So here we have Procyon, and here we have Regulus. So if you're going to split the difference and go a little higher, look for a fuzzy patch in your binoculars, you can pick up the Messi 44, otherwise known as the Beehive or Persepe, which means manger in Latin. And um, when you're looking at it, you want to use low magnification in your telescope, and you want to look for, you can look for pairs of stars, chains of stars, patterns, and things like that, and try to maybe estimate how many stars there are in the cluster. Now, below that, a little bit closer to that line between Regulus and Procyon is Messier 67. Messier 67 is a little difficult with the naked eye, but binoculars and an any size telescope will pick it up. It's, uh, it's about three degrees above that, that midline, that line joining those two bright stars. And um, you, can, you can use the kind of head of uh, Hydra the snake too to find it if you want to do it that way. As I said, it's, it's smaller and less, less sort of intense or impressive as M44. And so it's going to be a little bit harder to see, but you can look for, again, uh, different types of stars in it. There's actually um, a golden eye, which is, gives it its nickname, the golden eye cluster. And the Pac-Man would, would arise from its shape, so you can check that out. Next one up is we're going to swing over, because we're looking at brighter objects, we're going to swing over and look at M40, which isn't ideally placed at this time of the year, but in the next couple of weeks, it'll be um, higher and easier to see. And it's up here near the, the, the bowl of the Big Dipper. And what you can do is take the inner edge of the bowl from Fecta to Megrez and just carry on a little bit and find that messy object. I think if I bring up my Telrad here, then you can see that you can put your Telrad rings, kind of put the Megrez star in between the two outer rings and pick up. This now M40 is um, is unusual. It's actually um, a double star. We're not sure if if it was an accident in Messier's list or a misinterpretation of another object. But um, anyway, that's that's what counts, and that's what you're aiming to look for in your Messier certificate. Those, those double stars. While you're there, though, you could look for some other things in the neighborhood. We just bring up <clears throat> some NGC objects here and see if we can pick up. So there are some galaxies in the neighborhood, and it is possible that Messier may have been 
you know, actually seeing another one of these galaxies and, and then, um, you know, mistabulated the object <clears throat> for M40. So those are the three bright objects that you can see this week with the moon in competition. But if you get your early start on some of the other objects that are coming up, then what I suggest you do is start working on the brighter galaxies. So what we can do first is head on up to the Dipper area again here and look for M81 and M82. So M81 and M82 are two galaxies which are telescope close to one another. So if you use a low magnification eyepiece, you can see them both. And the easiest way to find them is to locate the Big Dipper, which is standing up on its handle in the evening right now, and draw an imaginary line from Becta to Doobie, cross the diagonal of the bowl, and double it. And that's, you can put your, you know, your, your finder scope on that spot in the sky, and you're almost guaranteed to pick up M81, which is the brighter of the two galaxies. So this is visible easily in small telescopes. I've seen it in the suburbs from my driveway with streetlights compete, you know, competing, making the, the neighborhood bright. So it's really, really bright enough for almost anybody to pick it up. Um, it's partly tilted and that gives it a little more concentration to its light, makes it a little bit brighter to see it. And, uh, and yeah, you can look for, once you've got M81, then M82 is pretty easy. There's M82. And again, if I put, my eyepiece view here. You can see that they'll share the eyepiece in a, say a six inch Dobsonian with a 26 millimeter PLOSA lens. You know, easy to, easy to pick them both off. Now you're gonna find M82 is, is smaller, but it's actually fairly bright because it's kind of an edge on structure. So it's got high surface brightness. And there is actually, um, it's, it's, it's got some starburst happening in the core. So you, if you do an image of it or, or um, you know, you have a nice dark sky and a big aperture telescope, you can see there's some disruption in the center of the galaxy. Next up that I'd recommend in the short term is going over to the Owl Nebula, which is M97. And M97 is, again, kind of easy to find using the Dipper as your guide. And what you can do is, is find Dubian and Merak, which is the outer rim of the bowl, and then drop down here. And uh, if I put the Telrads on, here we go. Then you can see you can practically put Merak on the edge of the Telrad rings and pick up this um, planetary nebula. So it's a planetary nebula. It's very small. You can see it's much, much smaller than the galaxies that were, that were showing a second ago. Um, bigger telescopes help, or if you have a smaller telescope but very dark skies, you should have no trouble. You will need more high magnification to make it big enough to really make it out. Um, if you have an oxygen three filter, it'll brighten the nebula dramatically. And when you're looking at it, see if you can pick up any of the, um, the, you know, the internal structure and get a sense of the eyes and the owl while you're looking at it. So sort of dark, darker zones that are resemble the eyes of the owl. So that's M97. And the last one is the surfboard galaxy. So there's surfboard, oh, we got a couple more here. Surfboard galaxy is M108. Nearby, not too far from the Owl Nebula. Again, it's kind of on the way from Merak down to the Owl Nebula. Surfboard galaxy is um, better in a bigger telescope or very dark skies for a medium or smaller telescope. Um, it's Fairly edge on, so it's got good surface brightness. And try to see if you can see any of the modeled structure when you're observing it. Next up, we have M109. M109 is, again, easy to find using the dipper stars. You're going to be taking the bottom of the dipper, the base of the bowl, and extending it further under the handle. So start at Merak, go to Fecta. And this one you're seeing another spiral galaxy. It's fainter because it's more open, you know, face on, but so you'll want to, you know, better sky conditions, darker conditions and a bigger telescope to see that one. But you might be able to pick up some hint of the arms wrapping around. And the last one up for this round is Messier 106, which you can already see is much bigger. And this one is located kind of a little bit of in a, in a kind of a, nondescript part of the, uh, the sky, but you can use that trick of using the Dipper's Bowl again. You can start at Doobie, 
go to FECTA and double that distance. So now you're instead of going this way to M181, M82, you're going the opposite way down to M106. So it's actually pretty easy to find it in that respect. And again, it's relatively bright. You can look for some structure in the arms and uh, you can look for these other nearby little galaxies nearby. So that's the messy objects. And Samantha will post those for everybody to see so we can, uh, you can chase them down as the nights get darker and darker next week, next week and onwards. Any questions on any of the messiers, Samantha, before I put this away? I don't see any comments on the messier other than Messi made a mistake. Um, it's merely an optical pair, not an actual binary star system. I'm not quite sure. I might have missed what that was to comment and comment to. But. Yeah, so the, the term double star sort of covers both that, both aspects, binary versus uh, line of sight. Learn something new. Right. Okay, um, if there's the any questions for Messi, speak now, forever hold your peace. Okay, we're ready for the main attraction. 